We are going to learn five easy Coheed and Cambria riffs that kick ass. Grab your guitar and let's get right into the first riff. This is a very iconic Coheed riff and it's not Welcome Home. It's the other iconic one. It's a Favor House Atlantic. It goes like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a power chord on the fourth fret of the A string. And if you don't know how to play a power chord, maybe you're just getting into guitar, it's a-okay. That's what I'm here to do. I'm gonna teach you, you watching, how to play a power chord. We're gonna take our pointer finger and we're gonna put it on the fourth fret of the A string, right there. And then I'm gonna take my ring finger and I'm gonna place that on the sixth fret of the D string. And that's your basic power chord shape. You can move this formula around. It's very metal. You don't want to do it like one fret apart. Actually, that might arguably be even more metal. If we do it one fret apart, we get a tritone. It sounds like this. Anyways, back to Favor House Atlantic. This is our power chord. We're going to play that three times. No, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Then all you're going to do for this next part is you're going to lift your pointer finger and you get this open A string with your ring finger still in the sixth fret of the D string. It's very easy. And we love easy rips. That's why we're watching this video. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, lift. And then we basically are just walking down the scale. So I'm gonna go up to the G string. My pointer finger, I'm gonna hit four. Four, six on G. Then I go down to the D string and I hit four of my pointer finger. And then my pinky, we gotta get the pinky involved. Pinky's up. We're gonna bring that to the seventh row of the A string. And then our ring goes to six on the A string. So your whole favorite house Atlantic riff is as follows. You do that three times. And then you're in the rest of the song. That's a really great riff if you're just starting guitar, but you're like a couple months in and you've got your power chord shape down and you want to spice it up a little bit. Um, this is a riff to do. This is a great riff. Yeah. This is a great riff to do that on because it's essentially just a power chord and then you're riffing around the power chord. But you're not really moving from the power chord. You're not moving too far. So it's a great riff. Check it out. We're going to now move on to riff number two, which is the running free off of No World for Tomorrow. It goes like this. And this is a great riff to learn palm muting because if you don't palm mute that, it sounds like this. And it's not very desirable. And I don't recommend you do that. I recommend you palm mute it. Um, when you palm mute, all you wanna do is take this part of your hand, which is called the palm, go figure. And uh, you wanna rest it, not on the bridge of the guitar, because then you're not gonna get anything, but you don't wanna rest it too far off the bridge, because then you won't get any clear notes. I like to rest it just like where the string meets the bridge. If you have a tunomatic bridge, like I do on, a lot of my guitars, or even like the vintage Fender style bridge, you can kind of feel where these little rivets on the bridge go up and they hit your hand. And that's where I rest my hand. Other than that, it's a very easy riff. You're gonna use these three fingers, your pinky, your ring, and your pointer. All in the D string, it's 10, nine, and seven. And you're gonna play those while hitting the open A string. And you get 10, nine, seven, then open on both of them, and then back up. Seven, nine, ten. So it's. And then the second time through, you're just gonna go ten, nine, seven, ten, nine, and then both open. And actually, I lied there. Um, that open after the ten, nine, seven. 10, 9 is the open D and G string. So you gotta move your pickup a little bit. Look at that. You got two Coheed riffs down already. See, they're not that hard. They're easier than you thought they were. And if you love Coheed and Cambria, you'll love my brand new single, Fly, that you can stream on all platforms now. Can you hear me calling?
right, now that the shameless plug is out of the way, let's learn riff number three. Let me know if you know this riff. That was 10 speed off of Good Apollo 1. And I know you're saying that's an E flat. Well, I'm not getting a new guitar for this. Just imagine it's an E flat. If you want to play along with the album, tune your guitar down to E flat. So what you would do, starting from your high E string, it would be E flat, B flat, G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat. Just put a flat in front of everything. Put the little lowercase B. Anyways, let's learn 10 speed. So you start by hitting an open A power chord. Oh, so it's the open A string and then two on the D string. And then you're gonna play that fretted D string while that A is ringing out, and you're gonna slide it up to seven. See that? We don't wanna come right up, because that's not the sound, there's a little slide up to it. So we're going up to that, we're sliding to the seventh fret. I'm gonna take my ring finger, go to nine on G, then I'm gonna hit seven on G. Then I'm gonna bring my pointer finger down to seven on the D string. And if you notice, I'm actually gonna just bar those two so it's easier for me to get them fluid. If I, if I was really arching my fingers, you could do it, but I don't know, for my style of playing, I just kind of bar it, it works. From that seven on the D string, we're gonna take our pinky up to 10 on the D string. I'm gonna use my ring finger to hit 10 on A. I'm gonna go back to nine on the D string. Use my ring finger to hit that 10 on A one more time. And then I go back to seven on D. And then when I go back into it, I don't hit the power chord again. I just slide. So your whole riff. Other quick note about this is a slight palm mute to each of them. So you're gonna be like balancing your wrist. It's gonna be like touching and then leaving and then touching. You don't ever wanna lift your wrist too far from the fretboard. Oh my God, I totally blew my shoulder at the gym the other day and I probably need to get surgery. But anyways, that's a me problem. You just wanna learn Coheed songs. You wanna like be flexible with your wrist. You don't wanna be so stiff that you can't not mute. But just like we were talking about with the running free, if you don't mute any of it, it's gonna be, what, what do I, how do I say this nicely? It's gonna sound like poop. The fourth riff, we gotta actually change the tuning of the guitar. We gotta go to drop D. You wanna take your low E string and tune it down so it's also a D. See how those match now? And now I can play power chords with one finger. And I can get these really cool like extensions on chords. Just like they do in shoulders. That's not the riff we're gonna learn, but shoulders is also in drop D. Um, kind of like the shoulder I just hurt. <laughs> um, that song. But the fourth riff out of the five easy Coheed and Cambria riffs that anybody can play and they kick ass. Number five is my favorite riff off the second stage Turbine Blade, and that is June Song Provision. <laughs> So remember, with power chords, we just have to play one finger now. So I'm gonna bar nine on the low E. I'm still gonna call it the low E, but it's tuned to a D now. It's low E, A, and D. We're gonna hit that twice. And we're gonna do this thing called a slide to nowhere, because I really need to make a full video on what the slide to nowhere is. But it's a concept that many rock songs use. I don't know if I coined the term or not, but essentially you're gonna hit this note. You slide it down the neck, but you're not really, you don't really want to hear those notes as you slide down, because then it just sounds like a chromatic. As you slide down, you're tampering off the note, and all I'm doing by doing that is I'm just, or tapering, not tampering. Tampering is like what you do with evidence. Like, like what Death Clock did at the murder scene of Odin. Tapering is when you like lift your finger off the strings, so then you just get string noise as you slide down. And when you do it fast, it sounds cooler. Hear the difference? Versus, that's, that's what we want. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna hit nine, nine, and the second nine we're gonna taper it off. 
Then we're gonna hit open. Mute, mute. Hit the fourth fret. Mute two more times. Open again. And then, this is how I play it. This could be right, this could be wrong. I think it sounds cool. I do an open power chord to a hammer on the fourth fret. Then I hit, then I mute the open one more time. And then I move up to the fifth fret, but I'm, I'm barring five on D. I'm sorry, I'm barring five on low E and A. And I bring my pinky finger up to hit seven on the D string. And now we have a ninth chord. Those are my favorite chords. And if you listen to Fly, you'll hear ninth chords. That's the whole chorus riff. Oh, I got him again. <laughs> no, seriously, please go check it out. I think actually, if you like Coheed, you'll like this song. This is the ninth chord. You're gonna hit it twice. And you're gonna palm mute that five a couple One, two, three, four. Hit the power chord. And now we have one of two endings. The first time we play a power chord on the fifth fret of the A string. And then I'm gonna separate my pointer finger. So I'm actually gonna play the power chord with my pointer and my pinky. So when I do that separation, it's easier on my hand. I'm, bring, I'm just bringing my pointer finger down to the fourth fret. So we got power, 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 power. The second time the ending goes like this. I hit the power chord one, two, three times, then I hit open, and then I'm gonna play seven and seven on the D string and the A string. So that's. And then, again, I taper it off, and I let the open strings hit there, and I go back into it. The June song provision is played like this. Check this out. Look at that. We switched the guitar up. Personally, I think Coheed and Cambria has some very underrated acoustic work, and that's why riff number five is gonna be an acoustic riff of theirs. I'm gonna finger pick it, and then at the end, I'll show you how you could play with the pick. This is Ghost off of The Color Before the Sun, and it's really just two chords. Check this out. Essentially what Mr. Claudio Sanchez did here is he figured that an A minor seven has the same two notes as an F add nine. It's a little bit of a stretch. All you're doing in this is you're changing the root note. Two shapes that we're going back and forth with. So this is a minor seven shape that we're gonna learn first. And all the, by the way, both these shapes are transferable all throughout the neck. So like, if you wanna be playing, I don't know, jazz and you gotta move that minor seven around. That sounds jazzy, right? But you can do that because these shapes are all transferable. Just assume they are until they don't sound right and then they're not. But for Ghost, it's gonna be A minor seven. So what we wanna do is we wanna put our ring finger on the fifth fret of the E string. I'm gonna take my pointer finger, put that on the third fret of the A string. And then my ring finger, I'm sorry, my ring finger's already pressed down. My pinky is gonna go to the fifth fret on the D string. That's shape one. Now shape two, is the add nine shape. If you know, um, you know a song by the police message in a bottle? It's that shape. And this one happens to be F. So what we're gonna do is our pointer finger is gonna go to the first fret of the E string. Then I'm gonna take my, just like a power chord, I'm gonna take my ring finger and put that on the third fret of the A string. And then I've gotta, this is the annoying part. I gotta stretch my pinky all the way out to the fifth fret. And that's your add nine chord. But what you can do, check this out, you wanna cheat. If you can skip over the D string, you can hit that open G string. So now you just got. I 
I would encourage you to learn how to stretch that pinky because just like James Hetfield does with Enter Sandman, he keeps that note pressed down as a safety because what happens is if you don't hit that, and say you accidentally hit the D string, you get a wrong note, which happens to be in the lead of the song. It's just an octave up. But yeah, so that's Ghost. And then my picking pattern for those two, E, A, E, D. E, A, E, D. E, A, E, D. E, A, E, D. Um, if you want, you can do it with the pick. It's gonna have a little more of an aggressive sound to it. That's Ghost. And that actually concludes our five easy Coheed and Cambria riffs that kick ass and anybody can play them. I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you learned something new. Maybe it's all review, but you just like playing Coheed riffs. I know I do. Happy playing and stay classy and stay one among the fence and slay. And I'll see you next time. Peace out. Can you hear me calling?